welcome back to Rat G, Ryan's All Things Geek, right here on 103.7 FM, Brock University Radio. Or you can be listening to us live online at cfbu.ca. Ryan Fleming here with Rat G Radio. I'm sitting with uh, Curtis Paquette, uh, one of the creators on Swamp Thing. Yeah, well, I was a creator on the, the new 52 Swamp Thing. When, the they, did, f- when they relaunched the thing, uh, they offered me, I was exclusive at DC, I was doing Batmaning with Grant. They offered me a list of characters to choose from. A lot of them sold a lot better than Swamp Thing, but Swamp Thing was on the list. And I've grown up being a massive fan of Bernie Wrightson. And uh, later on, I discovered the magical that is uh, Alan Moore through his work on Swamp Thing. So it felt like I had no other choice but right. you know, to go there. And so this was, this was a heart project for you then. This is, oh, yeah. this is something that was really close to you. Um, now, when it comes to Swamp Thing, you and I talked a little bit beforehand. Mm-hmm. It's it's not your typical spandex comic book. No, no, no I, really not. I mean, the way I see, it is a bit surprising that the American comic it's almost one type of fiction. Right. Uh, while in cinema, you can also you get like romantic comedy also. So uh, because what we do at DC and Marvel is mostly one type of fiction, which is the spandex stuff. As soon as you have another type of fiction, in their case, it's like. It's horror, but it's like poetic horror. It's not like a slasher movie or a zombie film. Or right. It's almost it's, a beautiful It's horror. a beautiful horror, sort of. Um, this is our type of fiction. This is the kind of fiction we're doing. And it's not the same as Superman, which makes it kind of not really compatible with the rest of DCU. It's almost a problem, in a way, from a corporate point of view, because what they want to do is that I have all these characters which are franchise and one world in which you can interact right. and you know so you can put Batman and, and Swamp Thing and make the sales go up right they think and, Swamp you know, Thing will go up a little bit higher if you yeah, throw yeah, in they Batman do, they or do all these, and then yeah they can be all put in a movie or in a big like crossover that, now that ultimately concept. now uh, no, most of the fans for Swamp Thing are going to be more of your true fans right the fans that have been around since the Alan Moore days yeah and, honestly and, honestly when uh, I was quite surprised when the book came out uh, most people didn't weren't even aware of Alan and oh, really? yeah they were all new fans oh. except you know for the old guard that knew stuff uh, and we are inferring in a book that the Alan Moore era did exist right. uh, unlike all the other new 52 where it's really like we start from scratch it's, issue one is usually the first adventure or something like that uh, we start by Admitting that there is a past already right. that we might or might not explore, but that past is the Alan Moore era. So uh, Abby is showing up at some point, and she's in our the Abby that we're doing. She's just uh, like short hair. She's super tough. Right. With a leather jacket not and a motorcycle the and, a, and a shotgun. And and as she as she show up for new readers, it's like oh, this is like uh, pretty badass, like a, a badass lady. But for people that know the Alan Moore era, you you realize, oh, something has happened because Abby is like this, it's not her, like she must have been through some terrible ordeal, right? right. She became that. And that you're using true. the past, the, like you said, you're using the past stories as well. Like you acknowledge them. Yeah, we do. So then there was some kind of transformation that has happened with Abby to bring her from kind of the meek character she yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. To and, you- and we explore that, that in when Swamp Thing disappeared because what we kind of do is after he goes to another planet, that's where we assume that you know, this is the end of the Alan run, right? right? And we assume that he's not really coming back, and then she has to go on with her life without the Swamp Thing. And, right. But the forces of Anton Arcane and all all the, mis- the, the, the evils right. of the world are still grinding at her. Actually, um, I don't want to stole all the punch for those that no. haven't read it, but you know, this pick up, I've been around for a while. No, you may right, be exactly. the only one that didn't yeah. read the thing. <laughs> but, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, the the story arc, the overarching story of, of Scott and I is that they both start human. Abby 
and Alec, they're both human, but they're both supposed to play a part in the grand scheme of nature, which is Alec is supposed to be Swamp Thing, which is the avatar of Plan, right. and, you know, take care of that aspect of life. And Abby is, by because of she's an arcane, she's supposed to be this avatar of death, Oh, in, a, wow. in a positive fashion because that is not it's just transition right, you know right, right. Um, but they both resist and that creates a big mess and so like the power of that is just out of control because nobody does and the power of plan just wants somebody to take care of right. things and then later on we got because we were close to uh, Jeff Lemire and Animal Man right uh, and Animal which Man, is a great, a great story great wow. book and Animal Man is the avatar of the animal so right. between us we uh, completed the, the circle of life nice. if you want uh, later on uh, when we quit the, the book um, Charles Soule took over and Charles knows his biology pretty well because he's managed to create like a, a third a fourth group which is the mushrooms because the mushrooms <laughs> they're a like, bunch of fun guys. Like, yeah, it's the fun guys. <laughs> I mean, they're not, a, they're not plant. They're right. not animal. It's, they're truly, they need a representant. And uh, I think his arc finished with, like, the machine. Because right. the machine is maybe in uh, the last, the ultimate expression of life. I like in a that. Way. That's a... And so, with all those avatar of these very section of expression of matter and life, this, this, I guess this is like the mystical aspect because earlier on, before this interview, we must say, yeah, yeah the, the mystical it. aspect of, the, but yeah, now we're reaching the, the core mystic. Well, right. Now, is that going to be their way of trying to um, team it up with uh, Justice League Dark? I, I know he's not quite, he hasn't been there yet, but there's always that talk that it's kind of almost along the same world, you know, yeah, as yeah, the, well, the John Constantine. The, and Yeah, the, the book, I think the book has been canceled now. I mean, oh, they right. don't do Swamp Thing anymore. Uh, and I think he's supposed to join or maybe he did already yeah uh, I think joined, he did uh, GLA Dark the thing is yeah because because he has another that arc back to what we were saying at, at the beginning because he has a, its own type of fiction it seems like it can't work with others you know right it can't make a cameo in Teen Titan because they have their own to totally different exactly. world exactly um, but by canceling him and putting him in a group it's like a, a, it's, a, a and he's good never really direction. been he's never really been a group character though. No. He's kind of always been that no, solitude honest, character. With, honestly, they do whatever they want. They, they own Swamp Thing, right. right? But I'm all about diversity, so I would have preferred if all those characters could create their own world and not have to interact with right. each other. I mean, the GLA they act together because this this is the world that they live in. This, this that's mm -hmm. a principle, but to promote other kind of fiction right you know, I would I would love like a naive love story for a little girl or for a little guy whatever right, which, like, you, which, which you don't have anymore you, you don't have so everything has to be mm, uh, kind of the same right it's, it's, a, it's true for Marvel and DC by the way it's not, yeah. it's not like a DC where Marvel now is that where it's better to be with the indie companies well, I, if, yeah, for creativity well, wise at least yeah yeah well creativity wise yes um, also one of the advantage of indie uh, is that well today is already inter the internet is a very explosive place right yes it is so I, I'm doing a, I've just finished my Wonder Woman Earth 1 with Grant Morrison right. so that thing will go uh, well this is like a part but uh, that thing will go out and we'll see you know right. <laughs> it's yeah. very hard to know but what's going to happen the Earth 1's have been doing pretty well though yeah well yeah I'm not, I'm not scared of the sales really I'm scared of the reaction and it's, it's very unpredictable the problem is that Everybody has their own opinion of what Wonder Woman should be in right. their mind. Right. And me and Grant, we have our own thing, and we're going to propose our own thing. And chances are that it's it's impossible, in fact, that it's the same as everyone. Everybody, exactly. Some people will be, oh, yeah, that's cool. I never thought about that. Or some people, I have my own idea. It's not this. You guys are really and like, we're in the age of, we're in the age of nerd outrage right now Yeah, as yeah. Well, and right? so, they will, so they will uh, they will just, you know, it will, it will be an odd cry. But if you create your own thing, at Image or whatever, and it's, I don't know, Butterfly Boy. Right, right, right. right. And all of a sudden, Butterfly Boy come, number one. Nobody knows what to expect. They don't have this own vision in their head. Right. So they'll take what you offer for what it is. Exactly, right at face value. By issue two, they might have their own opinion and want to write the, you know, right. the stuff in your, in your stance. But for at least one issue, you're really free of expressing stuff. People want there's might no restrictions, want it or not right? it or dislike the entire thing, but at least you're not competing with like 
the writer in their own head. Exactly, which is got to be a hard thing. And I do notice, even when you look at uh, casting choices in movies nowadays, yeah. which seems to be the biggest fan outcry you see lately. You know, when you've got Every Michael B. Jordan with, as uh, Johnny Storm or yeah, Lawrence yeah. Fishburne as Perry White. You now. We talked a little bit about uh, diversity and stuff like that. Where do you come out on diversity when it comes to things like that and roles in uh, movies? Are you more about give it to the best actor, or would you like to see it stay a little more true to the story? Like, are you okay with, say, one day they want to change Superman and give the role to Denzel Washington? Or I have no problem. But yeah. I mean, if the spirit remains true, I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay with any change, even if the spirit doesn't remain. I mean, right. experiments art. I won't get pissed. Right, right. I mean, just experiment stuff, find new ways. Maybe some some of them are viable. Maybe some, some of them, them are not. Right, right. You know, for instance, uh, that last Superman movie, which I find pretty bleak for a Superman. Me too. Me too. You know, I I've taken right. a lot of heat on my page for yeah, that. Yeah, well, listen, I got I got two kids. Uh, they're comic book fans. They're not like brainwashed. Comic. They could, I mean, right, right. Me, you know, and <laughs> right. all the people that I know, they draw comics. They, right. I, they could be like the like genius Uber uh, <laughs> fans, but they're not. I mean, but they love Batman. And um, at the time of the Nolan film, they were like uh, what six and eight, and. I've told the guys, well, we're not going to see those movies yet no, because you're, you guys are too young. Yeah. But uh, I've just heard that they were doing a, a, a Superman movie, right? And with the, you see Superman, it's it's not Batman. It's the, the opposite of Batman, but right? We, we got the Batman version of Superman. Yeah. It's like, I was like, you see, like, Clark Kent is funny. It's like, no. So anyway, we went to see it uh, with a the kid. Uh, they were a bit older, so we right. went. And we got this, like, like alien apocalypse type film. Um, and Pa Kent saying, don't save me, don't save the kids on the bus. Yeah, that didn't seem Pa all Kent these at moral, all. All these moral, dodgy aspect. And then, well, there's a scene in which um, Superman and, and Lois, after the, the city got destroyed, right. uh, just spiral down into, like, ground zero. And, um, well, my Superman will probably with a super earring. Hear all the people, oh my God, my torso is gone. You know, and, you know, do something about it. But no, he's, you he's know, flirting busy. and, you know, kissing, making a few jokes. Um, and then, and then I realized, oh, Zad is still alive, right? And I realized, all right, we're gonna get now. Now, now we're gonna get it. Now we're gonna get the big, fi- the battle, the right. bus, the bus battle. And I've turned to my kids, like, you guys want to go home? Or you still want to see this? And um, they both said, we gotta go. Really? We want to leave? And we did. Yep. Like slow motion walking from the screen, and we left. Um, it's not a bad film. I mean, it, it is no. kind of entertaining, but it's a it good is, film if it's not Superman. To me, it doesn't work uh, because, all right, it's a bit more of a philosophical kind of thing. But all these characters act um, like Greek gods to me. Right? right. The Greek gods yep. works because they all represent an aspect of humanity, like sexuality, the war, creativity, mm-hmm. this and that. Wisdom. It's like if you put if you put you in front of a bit of a prism. And then all of the aspect of personality are being like transferred into all those little gods. And, right. then, and then you can have them having adventure, but it will reveal truth about who we are. Yeah, exactly. So to me, DC, like JLA, like this shared universe with all these colorful guys and girls represents something. And you got a spectrum with, with Batman one, on one side obviously and Superman on the other the side everybody understands that right like Kingdom Come illustrated beautifully oh. um, even even Frank Miller in a, in a, in a managed way, yeah. to he oppose kept... those two as Polar different opposites. yeah and um but you know Hollywood yeah they did so well with, with Batman and they, they figure well people they're, you know their favorite X-Men is Wolverine because girl. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, they love like the bleak stuff like and Deadpool they love and, yeah, and, yeah, like they love violence, they love like Ugh. so but Superman can't be that. So that's what they did with Superman. And uh, it's it's almost like if you buy like a box of crayon, you wanna do like some painting and stuff, right. but you open it and all the crayons are now black. They're all black right, crayons. Right. <laughs> what the point of it all, right? Which is great if you're coloring the Cosby's. No, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Me but yeah, early. but now, but now they're gonna have to do a film with like Batman and right. Superman. So there's really no way this thing's gonna be any other thing than super dark. Exactly. And, and you can see that in the trailer already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The trailer really shows. And that. 
it's going to do well, I'm sure. And it's, it, I'm not even saying it's, it's, it won't be a good film. Right. I'm, I'm just seeing that it's really dark. Yeah. <laughs> If you're like me, it's not our Superman. Yeah, and it's, and it's hard, you know, especially for those of us that grew up with Christopher Reeves, um, even Dean Cain. Yeah, uh, but, but see, here's, this, that's where we should be careful because we cannot be the writer. You know, the writer exactly. and the other guys said, um, it's, not, you know, it's not for me, but I accept it. Exactly. Right? We don't have a choice. So, <laughs> a, a good example is like uh, the Wonder Woman stuff, all right? Um, I'm doing a type of Wonder Woman with Grant Morrison where it's coming out in November. Um, it's very opinionated the way we've did it we've did it in a, in a fashion that we believed in this is the way we should do it right. uh, which is entirely not the way David Finch for instance did right. now I love David by the way um, he's a terrific artist but his take on, on, on that entire franchise is not the way I would have go right but it is still valid right Because I'm you, not like this is the Wonder <laughs> Woman no I mean it's a valid take it's, and he took if, it he if, did the Greek he made her uh, yeah, Zeus's daughter yeah. and, and if he does that with good intention this is how I feel it should be done well accept the vision of the artist for what it is and not compare it to what I would do so it's not the right. same And then that, that'd be the same with trying to compare Christopher Reeve to Henry Cavill. Yeah. yeah. You know? Which is, which is understandable. It, it, but it's hard not to compare yeah, anybody to Christopher yeah, it, it Reeve. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you should not have your own opinion on things. Right. But it means that if it's not shared by a, an artistic proposition, it's, it, the only thing that it means is that it's not up your liking. Right. And it's, it says almost nothing about the validity of that output. Unless, of course, it's, it's done with bad intention. And then, you know? then you're no good anyway. And then nobody's good. No, everybody lose. <laughs> Fantastic. So uh, we've got uh, Wonder Woman, Earth One coming out in November. You yep. and Grant Morrison. Yeah, November 10. November 10. Uh, the book is all done. I mean, that thing took uh, a long years. time, like <laughs> right. two years wow. and a half. Something. Wow, that's some um, George Perez stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, but it's packed with things. I mean, right. I... It's beautiful. So are you, you going to be taking on the mythology portion of it as well? I'm not going to reveal a... any aspect of it. <laughs> We tried for you. We yeah, tried. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We tried. But uh, no, you'll see. All right. Um, well, there is a bit of it's. It's a bit more sci-fi than you might expect, I guess. Okay. Uh, this I can reveal because Grant already mentioned it in, in elsewhere. Area, yeah. But um, as we uh, as the, the the woman left Greece after the the Hercules debacle, which is like right. the classic Wonder Woman, the origin. Hippolyta, and then the, yeah, yeah. Right. and then they go to the island, which is Paradise Island, which uh, and, uh, yeah, it was one and, of his labors, and and then yeah, yeah, like sub to a girl. Like, what? <laughs> what? I just that, gotta get, I just gotta get a girdle. <laughs> that, that's pretty macho, right? <laughs> right. Like, and so we're we're replaying that that scene, but from a point of view of a bit more feminist, like all right, this right. guy this guy came. And his job, like, he's the hero, yeah. but he's supposed to... Uh, Basically rape, yeah, rape, rape yeah, so like, Come on, is, is it really moral? Anyway, yeah. he, anyway, uh, we'll see. Gotcha. You'll see what we do with this dude. But, um, but yeah, they, they flee on the island. But then, it's like, they got, you got like 7,000 years. They are on the island to get to today, right? Because if you go from Greek mythology, like these stories of Hercules to today, it's 7,000 years. So, if you look at the, uh, the classic Wonder Woman stuff... The island is filled with beautiful women in toga, and, right. you know, and to us, and like the, the Greek architecture and everything still, to us, I mean, it would make no sense. I mean, they should, they should, they live at peace, they're super intelligent, that technology would allow to flourish, yeah. art. They, you know, they, they would, would be they, more like an Atlantis. Yeah, yeah, they would create like crazy garment, and uh, they have flying machines, right. and so it's... So they are, they are clearly, like, superior. So, uh, last question. Your Wonder Woman doesn't have the Baraka blades? What? The, <laughs> the, the new blades that are uh, seeming to come out of her, uh, yeah, her no, gauntlets. In the, the, no. That's, uh, yeah, the DCU. So. Yep. <laughs> well, not there. Well, I just want to say thank you so much, Mr. Packett. It was uh, a pleasure to meet you. Um, hope that, well, we're going to get this out in November and definitely take a look at that. All right. I'm going to catch up on the Swamp Thing. Yeah, do. Uh, oh, well, for if, sure. If you want, you might wait, want to wait for September because we're putting out the deluxe edition of oh, Swamp Thing. So it's all the run that me and Scott Strider and uh, Mark Rudy and, and people that have been helping with the deadline because it was super slow. Right. Uh, and it's a beautiful art cover. I'm doing a, uh, a wraparound cover for this, which will be the best cover And awesome. the history of comics. 
you heard it here first. Don't forget it. Yeah, I'm taking control. I'm I'm calling people that never get called at DC, like the guy that does the design for the Oscar, yeah. because I want to use the the the, you know, the UPC barcode like inside the yard, and I want to control everything. Make, make it all all one. Yeah, all organic. And, and I, I like the idea. I, I think it's good. It's uh, I think Dan Dido's got to uh, watch his uh, job. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Pleasure, Curtis. Yeah. Yeah. Black magic. You got to know, got to show.